Dr. Veda, I've got one small clarification. In fact, I would like to know what exactly, at number six, what exactly is the quadrant approach? I heard it. I heard about yeah, that. We will discuss that. To be honest, I actually have researched it on the internet, and I don't know whether it's the same quadrant approach. Okay. That is no, I can tell you what I know. Is yeah, I can we can get it someone with an expertise to answer that. I have only one copy that was given to me, but it should be in your. Uh, uh, just, just another issue. Uh, sh should we limit our discussions on these 14 points? No, we should go beyond that. Yeah. Would you like to start by adding questions that are beyond this so that we can then time ourselves? Or, or, or we can go through on, on this 14 first, then we, if something comes up. Because the 14 <laughs> questions are pretty exhausting. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, no, yeah. Pretty more. Pretty For instance, it does not take all three minutes seriously enough. Okay, now we're going to go. So, uh, we have a presentation which we must... Actually, the computer doesn't seem to be compatible, so they want to get that. Then what we do is we start again because we're really on the show. Uh, who's in charge of the room? Can you put the screen on? Okay, can uh, I just start with two opening statements from, let's say, they are experts or three opening statements. And, uh, so, Jayajit, uh, Anu, and Lily Venki, who give us a nice all round. Just about two or three minutes focusing on the topic. Before that, uh, let me say that I'm a little in, in awe of working with a topic that says future and something associated with content creation, especially for government policy. Because what they're asking us to do is to predict the future of content creation and also advise them on what sort of investment or where they should invest. So let's, let's just have your thoughts on the future of content creation. Okay, do you want to go up there? I can talk. So while people are walking in, the four quadrant thing is something that MHRD has adopted. We basically say when you're delivering any e-content, you must have the video of the person delivering, you must have the audio, you must have the content and a whiteboard. So the so text video, content, audio, text, 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 content text. and text. So these are four. Yeah. Now, so the point is that good enough and uh, in fact when we are saying the future of content is kind of a little oxymoronic because you're putting in a constraint and then you're saying that's how future will be. Uh, future has to evolve, um, but I think for now it works because you need to put in some standards. So it's a good starting point. I think we need to think about what the standards. I've got I've got another suggestion. Yes, if I may, can I? So because uh, because since I have gone through it, uh, my my colleagues have also gone. So, we, so there are 14 questions. So it will be a good start, and we can make uh, some kind of perspective created for us. If we can go one by one through the questions, answer for ourselves. But if we, then we can create, if we feel that we I, I agree, but there are some constraints because uh, we have asked to speak are actually experts who will move from one to another and they may have to leave us. Okay, so, but, um, there so might we'll start with them, them and then we go ahead. Okay. I can make the first thing. <coughs> so I'll just you know convert uh, these 14 questions into a little bit of different framework. And the framework is that what are the business models of content creation? What are the operational models of content creation? What are the financial models? And what are the technological models? What is the my business model? Yeah, I'll, I'll come to each one of them. So and those what are the difficult words for me, at least. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'll go through each one of them. These are your own words. words. No, 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 no. One second. I know we are academicians and we are used to debate, so let's let's have a one-day broadcast or something. <laughs> but before I can do this, is you know the advertisement of this session? Oh, thank God. Are you taking notes or should I also take yeah. Okay, so there's your question. I'm sorry, Jayajit Bhattacharya. I'm Jayajit Bhattacharya. I'm, I'm an adjunct faculty at IT Delhi. I'm a partner at KPMG. Uh, so, um, what is the business model? From our perspective, and you need to have your own definition, from our perspective, from an academic world, uh, or a content world, the business model is one which allows sustainable content creation sustainable in a financial manner, right? So if I'm creating content and it's only based on the doles that the government gives me, and till the time the ministry decides that content creation is important for the nation, content creation will happen. The day they stop, the entire content will evaporate. Right, so that's not what we want. And if you look at some of these questions, for example, is content creation in Indian language keeping up with times? Well, the times and the need will also be determined by the business model. 
If there is a business model, you will create the content. If not, then that gap is identified and the government must step in to create that business model, which is basically the financial sustainability. And there will be there are different kinds of models. If we look at some of the other questions, that is it, uh, why is the government content not good enough? No matter how much we try, the content that the government is, is coming out with is clearly not at par with what the, the industry is coming out with. And therefore, what is the difference and what is constraining us? Clearly, it's again the business model combined with the second issue, which is the operational model. How does this industry or this whole activity of content generation work? Who are the key players in it? Who are the designers? Right? If you look at the Akash tablet, there are some things which are really fancy and nice. There are some things which obviously can be designed even better. And given that there's a design school within IIT Bombay, we can probably start leveraging that. So what is the operational model of content creation? Who are the players in it? Is the ecosystem existing in the country? Is the ecosystem existing in the government? When the government procures, are the different components being procured or not? Or is it a linear procurement that happens? Right? That's the operational model. The third part being the financial. Sure, sure. Should I interact? Yes. Or, or you finish? It's a very good answer. Two minutes. Okay, okay. Fine. 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 The third part being the financial model. Uh, there are extreme financial models like the Harvard University financial model where they believe that most of the payments of the student comes post they pass out. So most of their, their money comes in from the donations of their alumni. Now what are the various kinds of financial models we can have for content? Keep in mind that content is digital and you can have again other extremes like you, why can't you put advertisements in the content? It's the educational content. Clearly there are controversies around it. But we must look at other kinds of financial models besides the student being paying because the paying capacity of the students, especially K-12 students, is much lower. The last one we come to is the technological model. And again, you will see many of the questions getting answered if you answer these models. Is uh, what are the standards we follow? Can we randomly create content which is not of much use because then you can't integrate them? You can't do the modular approach that was being talked about in the modeling sessions. Can we have certain standards mandated? The flip side of that is that you can't evolve because the standards will also constrain the kind of content we come out with. So those are some of the issues that, uh, from my perspective, we should be looking at. Once we resolve some of these issues, then most of these questions start getting resolved. For example, I'm just picking up something random. Do we need to come up with standards that are required in different technologies used in the educational area? You know, clearly, yes, if you want to integrate it with a low-cost projection device, then the low-cost, quote-unquote, comes from the standards being defined. So the standards will, will drive the low cost. If I pick up another random thing, is it a good idea to come up with policy measures and incentives to increase the use of NMIC to create content? That is driven by the business model, the financial model, and the operation. So I'll stop over there. Thanks. Uh, your question? Yeah. Just, just one, one, two points. Let, let us clear. Yeah, sure, sure. No, no, for sure. Huh? Yeah, okay, one thing. The content development, this entire model, or etc., if we go back, say, print content, if I consider print content evolutions, mm -hmm. you will find there are very little effort by the government as far as India is concerned apart from junior schools. Majorly high schools, so it's a, from the experts, subject experts, professors, they have started and supported by different publishers. Right? And out of many such publications, only one to survive in the competition, depending upon the subject, depending upon the research. Now, that we know for the last 30, 40 years. When we were students, our major technical books were foreign published. Sure. Now you have Indian yeah. publications. Yeah. Good Indian publications. Now, when that was the scenario, say where from these models come, unless and until there are so many things coming up, then we think for the model. Yeah. If we think model first yeah. and then try to put our effort into the model, uh, is it the right way so of uh, handling the so issue? So, so again, now, that's probably the that's open discussion. Can clarify some of the things that you had put down? Uh, actually, no. I, this is actually going on a tangent, so if you yeah. don't mind me. So I will take your issue of the fact that books and accessibility, and we'll answer it when yeah. we go. Yeah, right. But I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, yes. right. Thank you. You'll have to introduce yourself. My name is Venkatesh Shariharan. I am a director of the non profit called Knowledge Commons, uh, and I work with Google on education technology and Indian language. So uh, we did a project where we took the CBSE syllabus and mapped it to videos on YouTube. And uh, what we found is that uh, there were quite a lot of gaps in the areas of economics. So we have mapped pretty much uh, first standard to 10th standard uh, content to videos on YouTube. And we found that in areas like physics, chemistry, maths, etc., there was a lot of good quality content. Uh, but in areas like social science, economics, uh, there was a huge dearth of content. 
So that goes to point number one. The second point uh, is that a lot of the content was in English. So for these subjects that uh, we match the content, <coughs> most of the content was in English. Uh, there is not much of content for school education in Indian language. So that clearly is a huge dearth of uh, content, uh, especially if you like to take care of that on the YouTube. Um, the, and there is other also the, the lot of challenges in computing in Indian language. So that's an area where there is a lot of effort going on. And uh, in fact, last week we organized a hackathon to create Indian language applications on Android platform for uh, you know for a bunch of publishers, etc. So I think uh, the technology for computing in Indian languages is still a huge dearth. But one advantage of say using videos is that it's a relatively language independent thing. So as long as you have a projector, as long as you have a, uh, a video recorder, you can create content in the language. It sidesteps issues and challenges of you know, that not having keyboards in Indian languages. Uh, the third point uh, of content generated by government funded projects not being used to a desired extent. I think NME ICT is a good example of you know, the popularity of content. and. Uh, uh, but at the same time, there was school content which has been created which is not that great. So I think uh, in this kind of a case, it's a very interesting situation where you have you know, tools and websites like Khan Academy which are extremely popular. You also have you know uh, websites like Enemy ICT which are very popular. So one needs to really understand the dynamics of this new media and see how that can be integrated in the classroom. One experiment that we did recently of uh, deploying these playlists and videos that we curated in the classroom was pretty interesting because we found that teachers are having a big challenge in deploying it in the classroom. But you give it to the kids, they simply love it. You know, because things like you know photosynthesis, things like phases of the moon, they are so much more, they cover them so much more when you show them visually, you know, or archaeology. You know, if you try to describe archaeology, it's very boring. But if you actually show archaeology and dig in the progress, Using a video, it's a lot more live and lot more interesting. So some of the exam, some of the pilots that were done of videos in the classroom, they have shown very good results, and we've seen that you know the overall classroom performances have gone up because of that. So I think it's a very exciting full time for uh, the use of technology in classrooms, and uh, I'm sure that you know it's a very there's a lot of experimentation and uh, a lot of research that needs to go into. One question, what platform did you use for mapping of CBSC to YouTube for the measure? No, we, we had uh, teachers who sat down and uh, because oh. because for example if you take photosynthesis for you know seven standard kids and you go to YouTube and search photosynthesis. So you get should be somewhere that you can have a link to the CBSC. Yeah. You have a question? Yeah, in fact I have a sequel to what we had to say about CBSC. So after he talks if I will talk to so yeah, one quick question, addition that I would like to say is that uh, over a period of time we would like to you know turn that into a crowdsource platform so that you know so if I am as a teacher I have mapped the seven standard uh, physics syllabus and uh, you know you would like to take it and modify it for your students that you should be able to do that. You know, so if I put together a string of twelve videos and you feel that some of these videos are not appropriate for your students, you should so basically we're looking to make it into a crowdsource platform. I've got one more. One observation here, because uh, in my institute, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research in Calcutta, we have been doing this video research for education purposes for a pretty long time. So, what recently we have uh, adopted a path that we try to find out what are the requirements so far as the curriculum in the polytechnics are concerned, and we need to find out the gaps there, and at which place actually video will fit in. So, we try to make the video scripted videos based on that. So, that approach would be much better. Take you a know, some problems when you look on it in the future. One of it's being here. It's not so easily searchable, although there's a lot of research going on. You can't, be, you can't exactly jump to it. No, not exactly. 100% uh, matching, we can't do that. Yeah, but we can discuss that when we come to those things. Okay, so there are two more people who want two minutes, but uh, can I yeah. just one minute before we go there? Uh, no, I, I don't want, actually, I want to focus on the point, and I want everyone to give their opinion on that point. These are opening statements which have, to be honest, taken too long. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, can you My name is Sudha Gopalakrishnan. I represent this initiative for Saha Media. Saha being a Sanskrit word for together, and media, of course, 
is an online, open online encyclopedia of Indian arts, culture, and heritage in a large, broad format. <coughs> uh, it's an upcoming site. We have I mean, there is a site already, but the platform that we, the ambitious platform that we want to create for creating a very, very interactive experience is not yet there. But I have to show you a video for about five minutes so that you know that I don't need to say anything after that. You know. Well, this is a five minutes. Uh, okay, minutes this is a collaborative site, open in the sense it will be a collaborative site in which we request people of all, I mean, including experts, practitioners, lay people, students, teachers, to co-create content in that sense. And also, it will be more. I mean, it will not be like Wikipedia in the sense it will be much more rich media uh, formats will be there. It will have audio, video content, timelines, interviews articles and several other features that we're going to integrate into this content. Also, it will have, um, because for example, if you talk about Ram Leela, say for example, the complexity of Indian culture is that it is highly non-linear. You can't just say that in terms of a performance. It's also at the same time a sacred a site. It's also at the same time a makeup way makeup evolves, uh, a site for narrative, for example, Sprosidas, Ramayana. So how to integrate all these experiences is what Unlike the Wikipedia, we will have uh, articles which are actually written by experts with their names written so that uh, there is some kind of authenticity built into the structure. And secondly, we'll also have the editorial controls if there is, I mean, mainly it will be as, will be as the contributor gives, but we also reserve the right to get in into some kind of <coughs> curation for partial content community. Uh, so this is a general thing. After I show this for about four or five minutes, then. Basically, what we are trying to see, provide is a set of tools as a tool set so that the classroom experience will be much more vibrant and interactive. Hi, my name is Pia. My assignment for today in music appreciation class is to make a detailed presentation on the Gwalia Gharana School of Music. I didn't really know much about it, so I got online and looked it up on Sahapedia. Sahapedia let me filter my search using a number of helpful options. I decided to search for articles and other content that was recommended by my friend network in both English and Hindi. Sahapedia's rich database brought up a variety of different content like music and video recordings, articles by experts, interviews, maps, and much more. I personally like to see as many search results as I can on the same page so that I can get an idea of all the content that is available. The powerful search tools allow me to run multiple searches, look at two or more search results in the same window, and filter my search results dynamically based on a number of common parameters like data format, language or recommendations, to name a few. I started with the basic article on Gwalia Gharana and found to my surprise that it is maybe the most illustrious school in Hindustani classical music. I located Pandit Maman Rao Deshpande's book, Between Two Tanparas, and Pandit L.K. Pandit's memoir of his father, Pandit Krishna Rao Shankar Pandit, in the Indian Heritage Library section of Sahapedia. Looking at one of Sahapedia's specially created interactive data sets, I realized that some of the most famous exponents of music belong to the Gwalia Gharana, from the historical figure of Tansen to the old grades Pandit Omkarna Thakur and Pandit Vidi Paluskar to contemporary musicians like Vidushi Malini Rajurkar and Pandit Ulhas Kashakar. I have never been good with dates, so I was a little confused about the history of the Gharana. But as I clicked on the lineage tree, it became so much simpler to understand the chronology of the musicians of each era. I was eager to listen to some music to get a real feel of the Gharana. On Sahabedia, I found photographs, stories, and of course, music clips. <laughs> that there were a number of interviews too with living exponents of the Gwalior style, like Ustad Abdul Rashid Khan, who is 104 years old, a true living legend. Helpfully, Zahapedia included both the video as well as a transcript of the interview. <laughs> I 
decided to create my own account on Sahapedia so that I could bookmark pages and collect information. In my personal account, I was also able to change various settings of the user interface and personalize my browsing experience of Sahapedia. Sahapedia has a great tool that records your search history visually. This interactive web traces your path through the Sahapedia database and marks all the content you have looked at. Importantly, it also shows you all the content you haven't looked at yet. This can really help you save time and give you an overview of your search results as well as the progress of your research. Apart from storing your search history, it is also a great way to navigate the Sahapedia database visually and get an overview of the kind of content available. With the help of this tool, I can take a break from my research anytime and when I come back even days later, I can easily pick up where I left off. By this time, I had read a lot on Gwalar Gharana. I had also been able to listen to the music of yesteryear legends and interviews of contemporary performers. To understand the context within which this music emerged, I turned to the image gallery to get a feel for the sights and sounds of the city itself. Sahapedia has a unique feature which lets you record an audio file along with an image or a slideshow which can really bring alive a photo essay of a city or a heritage site. This shaitri occupies the unique place in the 15th century Gwalia fort as it belongs to Maharaja. Eventually, I ended up looking in awe at the photos of the Gwalia fort. <coughs> Apparently, Emperor Babur himself was so impressed by this fort that he devoted some pages of his famous autobiography to it. Using the latest in panorama building technology, South India allowed me to experience the fort as though I was standing in it. I realized that my presentation wouldn't... Their, you know, in texture formats. So that kind of is a kind of resource, knowledge resource on that. So that is why some issues that can come up when you think of something like this, the license of the content and the quality of the content is produced in the screen information. Uh, it's not easily available to an end user. I can idea. understand that, but I think that this is what you will get from the. the uh, is the content outsourced or is it curated? Those kind of issues. Uh, can you just speak to us a few minutes before I stop? I'll, I'll, no, we, let's move on the schedule because we want to start here. Before Arun gives us his points, I want to pick out one point that he mentioned uh, while he was speaking, and that when he presented his thesis in 1980, he had to give it a typing tool to get done. And the way that we produce content is we have to outsource it to professionals. And now, because of our age, we are probably dinosaurs in the sense that we still have to outsource certain types of the content that we as academicians produce, especially video and uh, animation, beyond the text, beyond the chalk and the blackboard that we are used to using, beyond what we write in books. So what are the kind of content that we could look at, that we could actually start developing ourselves? What are the tools that we need to, as the future of content creation, that's what I'd like to focus on for now. You know? <laughs> uh, so you know, certainly the tools, so lots of good stuff. So in just a few things, you know, if we restrict ourselves to videos, you're limiting ourselves. So really, you know, like this art media, you know, to make videos, games and simulation, you know, there's a whole effort around games in the US, all of the big simulations, you know, interactive labs, assessments. So we gotta think about you know, content in much richer ways and much more diversity of content because I think that's really important. <coughs> you know, second is in terms of, again, if you look at Sahapedia, it's the Wikipedia versus textbook. You know, do you have small atoms of content that people can assemble together themselves now and they can navigate through versus, you know, pre-navigated linear pieces of courses and everything 
uh, that we produce, my personal take is that having a lot more flexibility and students taking responsibility for their learning and being able to navigate through and learn and follow, and that's how Khan Academy, uh, you know, uh, structure too is really uh, important. The third small element uh, that I had was around this directed versus crowdsourced versus market approaches. You know what I guess Sir JG was saying uh, in the beginning. I think there is a certain parts where the government should fill gaps, and particularly around you know the younger years that are there. But having a much more crowdsourced and market-based approach is where the best content right, rises to the top because the best teacher of a particular material may not be the famous professor when it comes to teaching. You know, it might be just lots of other people who can do it just a fantastic job of how they tell the story, how they relate. And also there is no one right way to do the content depending on the needs of the student, the context of the student, I think. Uh, it is really important uh, that does that, which leads to what I talked about in the morning, that if you have the right tools and tool sets, whether it was you know how Wikipedia and the, you know those tools that got created, or what I was talking about uh, in the morning, that really democratize the creation, and so everybody can participate and add and modify, whether it is video, whether it's other relevance. I think it would be really uh, important uh, to do that. Okay, so those are some just high level observations. Can we start with this and then we can speak about it? Okay, the high level observations that you're on the design So let's start with the schedule now. And uh, ideally, in a group discussion, everyone should be able to give their Opinion, but I think this room has become more than 17, so I don't know how to do that. But I'd like you all to speak, but uh, you have to also understand about time. So you have to restrict your opinion to what we are discussing. And if you could think about what you're saying so that we could take the notes down in a more coherent form, that would be easier. Uh, there is something in the back of my mind that I'd like to put, which hasn't really focused on, but I haven't touched on. As a teacher, my biggest gap in creating content is the lack of tools for putting tools. And that is for digital content. We've had a lot of experience of just experimenting with them, but we don't get the quality, the production quality, that you would expect for something like that. It's okay if I stand in front of you and produce something. Uh, there are software environments that are changing the pedagogy on which we are talking about, about how we teach. And I don't think that's been adequately covered either in these questions. So maybe if you could give us a little more input. The concept of constructivism, problem solving environments for a particular topic. And the way in which our students learn today is largely to solve a problem immediately. They find it in a how-to or a forum where someone has already put that question in and the answers come in from some mechanics. Now, how do we integrate all that particular content? This is new content. This is the future of content. It isn't necessarily created by a teacher. It's not necessarily teacher-created content. So those of us who are teachers over here will probably feel a little bit redundant with this discussion, but we should keep that in mind. OK, can we start with the first? Even though enemy ICT, a lot of content is created, for instance, in Dell, not all disciplines are covered to the same extent. What are some of the big gaps that need to be in focus? One, two, yes, Can we speak from there? Because come on, no, no, can you speak from there? Sorry. Uh, I'm going to give my response to my question. Yes, sure. Right. We'll come to you. Uh, Professor okay. Sayal. Sorry, I don't know your name, so you'll have to introduce yourself. Uh, can you speak from your place? Yes, sir. I'm comes uh, first of uh, content, uh, content development and creation, and then it's come and I wanted to look at the problem from production and market traffic. I, oh, I, want, I want to focus on what we are discussing. Now we come to that in the end when we yeah. sum up discussions. No, 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 just this question. Yeah. What are the disciplines that we need to cover? What are the <laughs> gap areas from MBTEC? There are a lot of them. So far, uh, the content creation is confined only to engineering process. Yes. 
Uh, regarding pharmacy, management. Okay, so that's one. Pharmacy and management, any other question? And microbiology, biotechnology, you know, and um, as much as we see Actually, the NPT content, as you are saying, very it is focused on the engineering curriculum, particularly IIT. Other areas needs to be focused, and uh, it it needs to be explained in a different way. That that uh, that it is uh, not yes. just uh, point. Uh, uh, <coughs> point. That's quite, that's quite appropriate. Maybe yeah. the teacher that is teaching a class of IIT students may not bring across the point the same way that you do. Right. So, so but that is where they discuss this idea of a blended course. Blended so or some, some, some solution. Thank some you. Solution. That's a very appropriate point. Anyone else? Uh, I think uh, we saw one hour lectures, like a normal classroom. The length of time. We have been talking about uh, attention span to 8 to 10 minutes. Why should we not have about 10 minutes? Small but, uh, audience right. Audience about audience module of 10 minutes or something like that. When you are monotonous. Uh, the quality of the lectures? Yes. It's very neat. No, often times, in fact, in regard to this, often times it is found that uh, the pronunciation and the, this, uh, the way they speak is not at all acceptable, but we still listen to them. So well, therefore, this has to be done. So, 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 that 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 so, so that sort of, uh, some sort of subtitle, some sort of things might some be required. Yeah. Might be there, but well, not well, always. Not always. Different languages. Different language. Different language. That comes to some other questions. Yes, sir. One of the major problems in, uh, in, in education, engineering education, is the employability. And we don't find soft skills courses. Courses, because the companies who recruit and have a few corporates here at the ULMB, uh, the soft skills courses are not part of the technical engineering. <coughs> and we find that there's a very big gap. I actually, I think that's a very strong point. I, mean, I come from a university which takes students from deprived areas. We have a large number of our students when we talk about this demographic evidence who are first time learners, let alone come from a generation or come from families which are privileged. So the problem with this is that what you're talking about soft skills, even translate as communication skills, and we judge them on the basis of their ability to communicate in English, which is Definitely something that needs to be done. That basically needs to be addressed at a bridge course still. We have these bridge courses in our university, schools and colleges. We have this in our university and our university as well. So that's some of the <coughs> but, uh, Let's just, again, let's go back one step to the engineering content because we're talking about technical education. Uh, university and education. Uh, can someone, one or two or three yeah, people, no, 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 uh, we'd have to do a little bit of homework because we have to go on. Can you make a checklist of the areas that are actual gap areas based on the curriculum. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Yes, uh, opinion. There, uh, there, are, there are some courses which have been uh, taught uh, for students of all the disciplines, uh, particularly in first year or second year, common courses I am talking about. Uh, I think priority should be given to uh, uh, those uh, subjects. As for example, here they have developed thermodynamics. In most of the disciplines, uh, this subject is being taught. Uh, basic codes in uh, computer science. In most of the disciplines, this is being taught. I can understand that, but we can also take a comparative argument. For instance, thermodynamics and basic computer science 101 can be taught by a neighboring lecturer. You probably want something that is added in only with the skills that are available in places like IIT to be disseminated across the Can I just Yes. 
that how our student if you have a gate examination, so the gate courses are different from different even in the uh, your different course curriculum. That is the sixth and seventh semester onward, course curriculum should be standardized in all over India. So that's why you don't suffer anything that he is studying in A or he is studying in B. Okay, I agree with that. So I put curriculum, I also put the quality of the lectures, the length of time and things like that. But someone has to do a homework in filling in subject level gas gaps. Yes, thank you. I'd like to know, this is not focused only on in people, right? Even for engineering programs. Let's take the aspect of industrial engineering and social management. When you talk about future of content creation, it's not only limited to engineering content. Right? Yeah. So and even in management, I don't see any association of IMs, so etc. It's been pushed by the government to create some content like technical engineering for management or industrial engineering. That will probably be taken up by someone else because how they generate the content no, from the disciplines. I am just so it is probably anyway it's something that we probably shouldn't go into discussion on why the IMs are not giving no, no, content. No, no, it's not that way. Not why. Professionals are not why. So we just list it as a requirement. Yeah, so we requirement is okay. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go on to the next question? <coughs> Have you got this down? Just I want to say that I think uh, those are very good points. I think the way we should think positively for the future is that we have done what we have done. And we should think about how to create adaptive content. Yes. I mean, it's, that's a challenge in itself, but you know, we have to really think, how do we create content that can be used by a variety of people at different levels sir, of... Just, sir, I'm talking about engineering and system or something like that. Can you finish your point, adaptive content? Is that it? That's fine. But the parameters along which it is adapted has to be carefully thought about. So, you know, you said language, you said level of English, you said level of uh, intellectual capability, all those are parameters. So those are, I was not talking about parameters with levels of content, I was talking about the skills that are required for a student in today's world. It's something that we take off as given from a public school background, but it's not true with a large section of our student population, which we all know. And it should be provided. But your content, the context of adaptive content is relevant in the sense that we're looking at content which can be changed and modified for an end user. But at what level? We've got the question. Yes. The question is actually regarding persons with disabilities. Whether this content can be accessible by the PWD, person with disability. I'll huh. put that in a flag it in as a requirement. Because we have some projects, whether our end people or some of the contents uh, created under NBICD, whether it can be uh, the video lectures, text formats, whether it can be accessible by the persons with disabilities. This is my question. Because end user must be anyone, no? Or I don't have an answer to that. So we put it in as a requirement that yeah. content should also be uh, required. It's my slight comment was that this is a little bit of a funny question to me in the following sense that if you look at US as an example and what's happening with courses, so professors are saying there's need for a course that they generate the content. Okay, it's a much more market-driven, need-driven, the industry needs something that's important, somebody creates a content. Nobody goes and makes lists of, you know, here are where there are gaps in content. The market in some sense and the need and the desire and the desire of the professors to do something in the famous drives to their content gets done. It's just that to me in my mind it's crazy the way we make yeah, okay. so I I agree with uh, what Anup was saying, except that let's change the yeah, focus sorry. of this question. No, no, not that you're wrong. The focus of the question presumably is that there is content available which is disseminated in a broadcast mode from the IITs which have been very helpful for colleges and technical universities which don't have the expertise. Do you have that slide or someone else has the slide that there were four lakh required teachers and only 50,000 people? So what is the curriculum and can we have it disseminated by having a virtual classroom? So we'll make a list of these and put it in, but uh, we'll pick up on this point later because I feel that we should actually come up with adaptive content with authoring tools and with uh, the kind of content that is created. Second is, is content creation in Indian languages keeping up with the times? All of us will agree that it isn't. What is the best way to create content in our languages? 
Uh, we'll have two sets of questions here because this is asking us what is the best way. There's a technical answer to it, and then some of us may feel that we have an answer. How much of translation and dubbing should we do, and what is the best way to create original content in our languages? Uh, would you like to come to now? So far as the, so far as the technical uh, subjects are concerned, mm -hmm. it is uh, <coughs> difficult to uh, translate them into 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 word language. languages. Very very difficult. So English might be the basic language, but we have to do some translation, dubbing kind of thing. The terms can be in English. The terms can be in English. Yes, it has to be. But there's coming a process. There's coming a process in Bengali, for example, in my language. A chemical, basically a chemical engineer by training. So the describing in Bengali a chemical process industry is very difficult. Yeah. So I have to use English, then some kind of dubbing and separate Okay, Absolutely. Very sorry for interruption. Uh, for that announcement, I think uh, there's a conference that has been arranged at Hotel Residence at 7 p.m. and buses have been arranged. I just want to inquire if anyone wants to avail a car to sleep in the day. All AC buses are there. And they'll be starting here around 6.15 or 6.30. Right. So anyone wants to make it 6.15. Make it 6.30. 6.15, not 6.30. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back. <coughs> yeah. So I have any, any car? Uh, no, bus will do for us. Okay. Thank you. You can give us right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question okay. one. At our university, we have been doing this. For example, CNC operation, how it works. So the students are from NTI, so they do not understand it. So what we do, uh, we ask them to facilitate in their own hardware, which is very easy as a uh, part to the students. We produce it in Surya. No, but that is, see, this is really a description of what should be done. So you take English content and translate it into a local language. Who's going to do this? How is it going to be done? What is the best way to do this? So one experience is we keep the technical terms standard because they are global standards, you can't change them. But you have to be able to convert the uh, language into some sort of a linguistic system where which the student can understand. You know, one way as a loop caused by by fine, where he had his image with his video in one corner and then there were slides. So if you can put those for the content which is right now, you can put those slides in Hindi or whatever language. That can be done and that does not cause anything. Let me look at it. Let me, let me give you a very short example from what we developed in the open source software world. For instance, we have two terms internationalization and localization. So, the content that can be converted, for instance, the health pages, the man pages, etc., that content is written in a particular format where you can use machine translation to convert them. Then your curation is very, very simple. The code is code. <coughs> Now take, for instance, the desktop. Obviously, there are certain things such as form and start and other things which are to be converted. But all those are solutions that have already been provided. Okay, they're very simple enough to change particular terms. Can we do that with education? You know of any technical solutions? I know, for instance, you could use a lexicon, which is a standard dictionary translation. Google has this. You can translate a page. But what is the level of translation? In our university, we have a project called APCD, Cross Partial Content Development, where we took Wikipedia pages which overlap with school content. And our university, being largely of national character, had bilingual speakers, English and their native language, from across the country. So we could convert each page into 30 languages. We only 22 common languages in the so these are solutions. Can you come up with some way in which we can create I think there's translation mission that was voted uh, by the state of culture or something. I mean, not just for literature and all that, but also for technical literature. So maybe it could be affiliated to that. If, uh, and also perhaps responsibilities given to universities or teachers to transcribe this kind of okay. After selecting, making a primary selection, Android applications can be used speech to text. So, we have three questions. So, we don't really have a solution yeah. on what is the best way to create content. Yeah, there are two things here. So, one that uh, from how many languages we are going to support it. 
ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਪਰਫਾਰਮ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਗੱਲ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ देयर इज अ वन इंटरमीडिएट लैंग्वेज व्हिच इज बीइंग यूज्ड इज कॉल्ड यूएनएल यूनिफाइड नेटवर्किंग लैंग्वेज सो इफ आई एम एबल टू कन्वर्ट माय लैंग्वेज इनटू यूएनएल ऑटोमेटिकली इट इज गोइंग टू गेट कन्वर्टेड टू मेनी अदर सो इफ यू टेक द ऑर्डर दे हैव टू कन्वर्ट माय लैंग्वेज इनटू टू इट विल बिकम एन स्क्वायर ऑर्डर बट इफ यू आर टेकिंग दिस यूएनएल इट इज ओनली ए एन ऑर्डर सो आई जस्ट नीड टू कन्वर्ट वन लैंग्वेज इनटू यूएनएल एंड ऑटोमेटिकली ऑल अदर बिकॉज़ दैट लैंग्वेज इज काइंड ऑफ अ इंटरमीडिएट कोड which will be recognized so the work is going on this even at iit bombay also uh, professor pushpak is working on this even at bombay i'm not sure we should focus into so much of grant proposals but i really want out of this paper a solution so if they are if it needs to be supported by a grant we need to develop this are there any solutions that you have can just see that as a solution in the local language for the same thing just add a caption Similarly, in the case of northeastern states, where we actually give it, we cannot give the captions. In so that uh, research done for CIS, for instance, the, one of the best ways to learn English for non-native speakers to watch an English film with the same language type subtitles. So the local subtitle. language you can use. That's what they can understand easily. But the dubbing technology must exist. How do we translate? What is the best way to create content in our languages? Would you suggest, for instance, the CDI has some good amount of uh, solutions for this. So there is coming. We just must develop it in the country. Yes, okay, sir. Five percent. We are running into what? How much of translation or dubbing should we do? Should we stick to a global language which is now English? Technology is there. Or should we still maintain our own language? Sir, it's not only global language. 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 Sir, it's not only global So again, if you can use the people, you know, if you need it in Bengal, you need it something. A local professor who is bilingual in those can help with those. Again, they can get the right tools that you can help. Text is very easy. Yeah, text is not too expensive. No, but also speech and body language. Nice. Okay. Practical skills also used in language. Practical skills. Then they instruct. Word and action. डिफरेंटेशन एक्से now at least if for every such uh, lecture there is a text version made available then that would be helpful transcription of the text yeah oh, just, just uh, transcription sort of so so at least they can uh, go through the uh, hard copy materials yes excuse me sir in the mobile application here there is an option as far as feasible it should be there it should be originally created by local crowdsourcing is a great idea even students reading uh, final year students to do uh, first year classes Number eight is there. Let's go back to that. Yeah. Okay, so let's quickly go through three. 
Uh, often the content created by government-funded projects are not used to a desired extent. Should the future projects create content in an attractive way, such as to maximize its use? If so, what methods are recommended? Can I first of all, what is your definition of attractive? Sir, visually it has to be attractive if it's a video. Video? Yes. Okay. It has to be attractive. Engaging. Otherwise, now, I can't I, for instance, think the NCRD school content is among the best I have there. She does not. You have this difference of opinion on what is attractive and what is not. <laughs> now, I feel that government content uh, is actually bound up with licensing. And it's not clear at the government level what they should do. They should have released the NCRT content. And that should have been made into a CC by or CC by share alike. And allowed chunking from that to use as a base. One, one uh, example I can cite. One yeah. example I can give that uh, we have plenty of such materials on uh, Gandarshan channels. Most of them I have found pretty boring. Yeah. Okay, but EMRC produced, EMRC organization, they produce quite attractive videos, which I have seen. So there is a comparison for you. You can compare it. Why so, is it so I think the point is actually should it be made more attractive or should it be made more available? The term is probably wrong. It's, I don't see why government should start producing. Let me take the example of Doordarshan versus NDT. They both news channels, given a choice of both. One would probably be better for its production quality, but the other, and I know I come from a very leftist background, probably has more sound content. After watching it because it's more attractive. The question is, Clearly, should government content be produced in a more attractive manner? Attractive is not a point. It is not a derivative. It is not a derivative. It is never a derivative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. Sorry, sorry. 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 Government funded content should be made available. That is my feeling. If you agree with that, can you show hands? Government can fund non boring items. Yes, no, no, that, that is a very subjective <laughs> point. That is why I don't want to go into attraction and, and other things. Uh, so, uh, if so, what methods do you feel are recommended? You don't feel they are. Actually, the yes. question is about the yeah, yeah. projects, not the content. The future projects create content in an attractive manner, yeah. such as to maximize it. Uh, well, there's a mission director here, so I will give you my opinion on this. What may happen is that a lot of the funds may go towards glamorizing content rather than actually getting content created. You know, this word of attraction is a little bit of a drag. Now, that's a personal opinion, which is why I asked you about attraction. A contrary perspective here is uh, many designers say that when you have form and function, even though function is important, I think all of us are you're seeing the same thing. Uh, what gets people first into it is the form. But the content is the content. Yes. But the content is the content. Okay, okay. 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 I have okay. seen lectures. I have seen lectures. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> I am saying no, and we have <laughs> some people saying yes. If you say yes, it should be done. In fact, the matter gives me an answer. No, no, one thing. Yes. All, yes. all the issues might not be addressed if you. So she we has only have to go beyond questions so of the right to debate things yes. so. So we have five, five minutes, five minutes for today, so shall we go? I have but one point. I bring out a magazine, <laughs> yes. bring out a magazine uh, in higher education. And when we were starting with the magazine, the one thing that I was told is please do not make it boring. Make it attractive. Everything that we find in education is so boring. So we spent a lot of time in designing the layout and making sure that people actually read. So the amount of time that I spent in designing is almost equal to the time I spend on it. Content is important. But if you don't yeah, get it, how many people does, does your magazine reach? No, no, that's enough. The how point is, does your magazine reach? The availability is also much more important. You don't get it. It is free. The point is, newsletters out okay. every day. Uh, we'll have to come back to what he said in the morning about when he said content is attractive and people say it's boring. It's also we have to focus the research on why it's the length of the time. The research says that if you go beyond 45 minutes, people are not going to I think that's a very good point. Can we focus attraction on uh, the what you mean by parameters? We should be proud of start a search on the right word. What is the right content? Yes, we have to focus on the right content. We have to focus on the right content. We have to focus on the right content. 
Yeah, I, I can give you one example. I can give you one example. Yeah, can be more uh, simple. So, you know, I mean, if you have a good speaker, I mean, you know, a teacher may be good in terms of knowledge. Yes. But in addition, if the person is an excellent speaker, they will have much more impact on a large number of people. So that is how I am interpreting attractive here. I, so, you know, because I, I, when you're doing it for the whole country... I understand, but I have a contrarian perspective on the this. Form public very, speakers are not necessary. I mean, we have... Yeah. No, 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 I'm saying both. No, no, there are some... We get a lot of content even by conversation. We have faculty who are very, very deep. So that is the form. Not very good with public speaking. It depends upon the form, being attractive or not. Your like content? You can, you can deliver the next for half an hour, but it can be dotted with some visuals and all the text. Okay. Is that so so that's not the answer to so the question. is the right word, I think. So would you agree that attraction right. can be engaging or intellectually engaging? Yeah, I'm quite fine with that. Yeah. 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 Because many people yeah. here yeah. are using yeah. the word yeah. attractive yeah. to mean yeah. intellectually yeah. Yeah. engaging. Right okay, so can you break down intellectually engaging into how we create intellectually engaging content? Yes, yes. 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 We have to engage some creative people. Okay, so we just say that it has to be done. There cannot be any formula for that. Okay, can we, uh, we wanted some methods for recommending what I am going on. Are you taking one? So creative people have to be engaged. Okay, so they have a the question at the back. Do you have a question or an answer? <laughs> No, I want to question this whole, the whole, uh, your questioning of form and content. I think both are important and you cannot have, uh, not have it. I, I agree. I was making a little bit of fun on the term attractive with reference to content. Because we needed to define what it was. I'll give you, it came out with form and content. I'll give you an example from the programming world, which is what I, I belong to. Years ago, we tried to argue that an elegant program, right, on the basis of elegance. But now if you look at me, I'm an embedded systems designer. An elegant program is very economical on energy. It's something you can understand easily. And apart from being beautiful, it is very economical in form. Right? So this form and content is not either or. It's, 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 it's both. Yes. It's form it's and an content are equally important. Separate. And if you stand up in front of me and mumble a lecture, that's yeah, unacceptable. You cannot separate. But it's not necessarily that we have to develop content as lectures. I'll come to that to, uh, when we run through this. Okay. Broadcasting from the stage is not the way that we should look at the future of content creation. We should look beyond. Okay, so just on the question four.